Hey, what's up everybody? 3D Theory here. Today is November 12th, 2024 at 2.18 p.m. And this is vlog number 68. Today, I'm having a little bit of green tea because I've been really drinking the coffee a lot lately and <laughs> I figured I'd have something with a little less caffeine in it. And this is doing the trick. Good stuff. Nonetheless, it's 77.9 degrees Fahrenheit in the tiny 3D print farm with a 23% humidity level. Those of you who are new to the channel, this is my tiny 3D print farm of five Bamboo Lab A1 3D printers. And usually what I print here are plates and latches that I store down here. But recently we had another order of 30 units come in for our main product, which by the way, here are the plates and latches connect to, but I don't really talk about where it connects to because this is a 3D printed focused channel and the rest of the product is not 3D printed. And this here is a completed product. What you have is this latch here with this plate that is printed out in gray PETG on these machines. And this is just the left set. You have a left set and then a right set. And I just pulled these out here so I can show you guys. And this is pretty much it. You have some screw holes on the bottom and essentially you click it and it detaches from whatever it's attached to. So we just finished up a bunch of these and they need to be installed. So there's a lot of work on the way. And I have a Bamboo Lab A1 with an AMS light combo top mounted here. I printed this out in the same gray PETG and I use this mainly for near empty spools of filament. So while these print out and it gets so low up there to the point where it can't finish a plate or a latch on its own, I throw it onto here, use the auto refill system, and it'll start printing a latch or a plate. And once it finishes, it automatically switches over to the next near empty spool and finishes off that print. So this is why mainly I use the AMS light combo. What you would normally see here are a bunch of 3D prints that are available on my Maker World for free download. And I got a couple of them here. There is a stealth French side table right there. It's a little tiny one. Just to give you a little size comparison, this is kind of like a standard size TV tray right here. So there's that over there on my Maker World along with this TV tray. So this uh, stealth TV tray can be found there as well. I got videos on assembly. There is the prototype for a traditional animation desk pen cup. I made a pen cup out of the old Disney traditional animation desks. And uh, that's actually available on my Etsy shop. You can find that in the link in the description as well. And likewise, over here, we got that lazy day tray, which I got a whole bunch of videos on that performed very well. People seem to have liked that idea. That's also available on my Etsy shop. And if you guys are interested in the laser blade from Lightyear, that's for free on my Maker World. You can just download it and print it out and have fun. By the way, if you do like how these gray PETG printouts look. This PETG is available on my Etsy shop as well. It's 3D Theory branded filament. If you're interested, check it out. Links in the description. But as I was talking about over here, I had a table with a bunch of 3D prints, but I had to use that table on top of another table <laughs> so I can stand and build out the uh, products over here. So that's why this rooms are looking a little bare as of late. A lot of little things going on. But nonetheless, today, the main topic is we're gonna finish talking about the designs over here and kind of my process I went through to get ready for 3D modeling, the spring-loaded pillbox. So in the last video, we started the designing process. We got up to the exterior of the design. However, there's a lot more that goes into it. So I really wanted to spend time and get into the nitty gritty, some of the technical stuff, and really do my best to get everything pre-planned out so I'm not kind of winging it on the spot. Usually how these week-long builds have been going here on the channel is I'll come up with a product idea that I want to then design in my sketchbook, then 3D model in Maya, and 3D print, ready to be put up on my Etsy shop all in one week, with one prototype ideally. And as you know, if you do product design and manufacturing, doing something with only one prototype is almost impossible. There's always something you see afterwards that you realize you need to fix. And it's it's been a super challenge, unless someone's figured out a way. I haven't really seen that. Working with engineers uh, that have been in the industry for over 10 years, and they even say like, you know, getting something down the first time around is pretty much impossible. and I definitely experienced that for myself as well. But nonetheless, 
I myself, I'm someone who likes to challenge these sorts of ideas <laughs> and see what I can do, see if I can bring something new to the table. So what I do with these week long builds is I kind of get the general idea mapped out on paper and then uh, I go ahead and I start 3D modeling and 3D printing in the hopes that I'll have something in one week. And this time around with the spring loaded pillbox, I really wanted to give it more thought. I wanted to go in and pre-plan everything as much as I can so that when I go in and 3D model it, it's a very smooth and easy process because I know what I'm doing with everything. So this vlog is a part two of the designing process. And, and I also did notice some of the behind the scenes stuff here is I noticed that not as many people are interested in the designing part. So that's another reason why I finished designing it off camera. But nonetheless, we'll go through everything I designed over here, what this is, and some of the tools that I used, like this here, which is available on my Maker World. It's a thickness test. And we'll get into that and how I planned out this spring loaded pillbox. Alrighty guys, so we kind of got the general idea over here and went through and designed the side and top and then a three quarter angle here. And that's where you left off in the last video. After that, on November 11th, yesterday, I went ahead and I started to design the pill holder where it'll actually be held. And so this shape here, this elongated hexagonal shape is this part here. And what happens is this pops out after clicking the trigger and then you'll have this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday lids that you can then lift up. Here's just one area without the lid here and you'll have, you know, your vitamins or whatever you use it for. I personally take vitamins and fish oils and the largest one that I have is a soft gel and I have it written down over here. It's 9.5 millimeters by 25 millimeters and I designed it so it can fit two and then three going across as many times as it can fit it but I only take one a day so I designed it with some extra room over here. So again this is just an example of one of the interiors in here. Now after that, now after that I wanted to work on the trigger here and as I mentioned in the previous video there's a clicky pin um, that I don't have with me right now but basically when you click the clip it closes the pen and then you can just click the top of the pen and then the pen opens back up. And I wanted to use that same sort of mechanism. So I designed the trigger around that. And I thought to myself, maybe I could 3D print a trigger that's kind of like an accordion here or just use a metal spring. And I decided to just stick to the metal spring here. And likewise, if you flip this over, there's this little clip hinge that is also featured on that pen I was referring to that I would put in here so it'll have a place to clip onto. Now, this part, which is the back of the pillbox here, has another spring, and this part would be in the back of the interior of here, and that's what's gonna allow it, after pressing the trigger, to let it spring open. So, going over here, this is the exterior flipped upside down, and I kinda drew a little back plate for the trigger, to have the spring kind of being pushed against. And here's kind of the inside where it'll have this kind of foot that presses down on this clip and allows it to shoot open and it'll get clipped onto this hole and then you could just push it back in and clip it back into place. Now, I didn't want this thing opening up unintentionally. So I designed, as you can see here, there's a little button that you can press that will basically be a safety. So you would essentially press the safety with your thumb and then click the trigger and it'll open up the pillbox. And this is how it's gonna function. It has a little peg that goes into the trigger. So there'll be a hole here. And so essentially you'd press this, it's spring loaded. And as you're pressing it, you can press the trigger and it'll open the pillbox. Then we have this silver accent. And I knew that I did not want to use AMS for that. The AMS, uh, I just, I feel so bad about how much you know filament it wastes. Um, it is, it's a really cool feature, don't get me wrong, but me personally, I just can't get myself to waste a whole bunch of filament just for a silver accent like that. Um, so basically I'm gonna do it separately and it's gonna have this little hinge inside or a clip rather, and you would essentially just fit it and it will be sunken in back here with a little place for this clip to clip into. And so this is kind of showing the interior where there'll be a cavity for this piece to clip into. 
And then I'll make a little hole down here at the bottom, which will allow me to use an M3 screw to kind of screw it into place and keep it there. Now with all that being said, up here I wanted to go in and see what kind of springs I was going to use and the wall thicknesses I was going to use. Because it's also important to make sure that what you're printing is printer friendly, uses an efficient amount of material, not too much, not too little. As you saw with the Lazy Day tray, there were some parts that were a little too thick for its use. But nonetheless, it just makes it really sturdy, but maybe a little too sturdy for what it's being used for. So I went ahead and I got my thickness tests and I sat outside on the porch listening to some real great piano instrumental music and um, use these thickness tests that are available on my Maker World. And it tells you in real world scale how thick something is. So this is 2.25 millimeters and that's how thick 2.25 millimeters is. And it gives me an idea, a good idea, of how thick I want to make walls. So for the pillbox walls, it's going to be 1.5 millimeter. The case, which is obviously this thing, will have walls of two millimeters with the pillbox separating walls, which would be the walls that separate on the interior here, uh, would be 1.25 because I felt like it didn't need to be as strong. And then we have the trigger at nine millimeters. It's going to be solid. And so I got a three millimeter with a four millimeter and a two millimeter, put them together. I'm talking about my thickness cards over there. And I saw, okay, this is how thick the trigger could be while housing a spring in the back. Then there's the trigger back wall, which is, uh, which is this over here. If you could see it down in the bottom right hand corner. And uh, we did the trigger back wall at 1.75 millimeters. And lastly, the silver part, I chose to do 1.5 millimeters. And I think it'll work, but it's kind of cutting it a little tight. It might be a little on the thin side, but that's something I want to test out. I didn't want to make it unnecessarily thick, but I could always make this 1.75 millimeters and it's going to be a separate piece. And again, has one M3 screw with a clip. Now, with all that being said, we kind of got everything mapped out and we know where we're headed. And I feel confident jumping in and 3D modeling and most likely finishing the entire 3D model in about a four hour span. I know that's kind of a tall order, but I'm pretty sure I could finish it in maybe four to six hours of 3D modeling. And when you guys see it, uh, it's been significantly shortened, the video, to about a half hour. So, <laughs> But nonetheless, all this stuff is ready to go to be 3D modeled. And what you see over here actually is a hinge tolerance test that you can find on Maker World. Someone made it. It's not my model, but you can definitely just look up, you know, hinge tolerance test. And it tells you 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 to 0 0.45, 0 0.35, 0 0.25, 0 0.15. And as you can see, these all move pretty freely except for the 0.1 and the 0.15. So they still move, it's just snugly in there. And I don't mind that. I actually like that it's kind of snugly in there because when you open up the lid for these, you can open that up, it'll stay open instead of opening and being all flimsy like this. So I don't mind it being tight like that. And as a matter of fact, I might just go with a 0.1 tolerance there. So this is really helpful to see what the 3D printer can do in terms of tolerances, as well as seeing with these thickness cards, what a 0.3 millimeter wall thickness would look like if it's too flimsy. And it'll help you with your 3D modeling process. I kept these calipers around in case I needed them during this process, but it seems like I didn't. And I got this spring assortment kit from Harbor Freight and I decided to go with a spring about this size for the back of the trigger and for the back of the pill case, a spring about this size here. So this should do it. And I did mark it over here. The trigger spring was the size that can be found here as well as the pillbox spring is the size that can be found there. So I pre-planned everything and this is ready to be 3D modeled, which we'll be covering in the next video. About wraps it up for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, peace, love, and joy.